After going over some of the previous episodes of critiquing my subscribers' designs, I've realized that there really should be a one-size-fits-all course. Ideally, from a professional designer with over 30 years of experience at the highest level, who can give a person with absolutely no knowledge of how to draw the ability and confidence to render any idea they have in two dimensions and three-dimensional perspective drawing. Now, wouldn't that be exciting? Welcome back everybody to the continuation of a very special series where I critique your designs. I really like doing these because I get a chance to look at the rising generation of car designers. I get to see what they're thinking and I get to see what their vision of the future of car design looks like. And hopefully any advice that I can give will help them on their way to becoming better car designers. So without further ado, let's dive into the very first submission of one very brave subscriber and their name is Jackson Lee. First things first, Jackson, great theme sketch, very well shown, very well depicted, great first idea. Now, I've always said that the more lines, the more thinking, but you've managed to capture the emotion and the general feel of the vehicle with almost a minimal amount of lines. And that can be the way you progress from being a beginner to a more intermediate and obviously a more advanced sketcher. All three views represent pretty much the same vehicle that you had in mind. The only thing I'm missing here, Jackson, is a side view of the vehicle. And when you're designing a car, one of the very first images that you want to design or you should design is the side view of the car because that gives you the overall size, the overall proportion of the car that you're trying to uh, come up with that you're going to represent with your sketch. It is nice to do the front view. It is nice to do the three-quarter rear and three-quarter front, but you should always include one of the most basic views, which is that side view. So that's one thing that's missing from here. In general, it's a great shape. You've got something that looks very professional, in fact. Quite aggressive stance, I would say. Uh, obviously, a more sporty nature to this vehicle. And the headlights, okay, adding a little bit of uh, character with this quite graphic layout of your, uh, let's say, position light and your side indicators. But again, perhaps not the type of personality that we try to give with the shape of the headlights because also when they're off, you have to remember lights aren't always on in the vehicle. So you can imagine that without any lights on, you're not gonna have a lot of character to the front end light signature as we like to call it. The other thing is, uh, let's start with your sketches obviously first here. The first thing you wanna do when you do a front view is exactly what you've done here. You've sort of lined it up You've drawn your center line straight down the middle of the car. In other words, you've tried to make the left and right uh, fairly equal. You haven't got it 100%. It's not critical to get it 100%. But again, the fact that you're sketching fast is quite good. You get the, the feel of the car. Not all times can we nail the front end symmetry of the car, but it, there's enough here to make sure that it's understandable. So great job on that. I like the shoulders you've given to the car, at least the fenders coming forward. It's hard to see any shoulder on the car in this view here. So I would imagine that is probably your front fender coming out fairly wide through here, coming off the belt line. So that makes it look quite muscular, gives it a good stance from the front. From a three quarter rear view, the only thing I wanna say here is that you've probably not shown enough of your detail thinking on the rear, you've just gone for, again, something like a graphic in the rear for the taillights, a little bit of the proportion factor here. Kind of hard to understand what's going on in this area here because if it's uh, electric, obviously nothing to do with uh, exhaust or tailpipes or anything like that, but this is sort of an unknown area. Put in at least a hint of a rear wheel uh, cutout or wheel well in that area there, that would help. Section lines would also help. So if you're gonna put in maybe just the rear of the front door section line of the cut line, then you would just put that in there. 
and give more of a feeling of what the section is doing through that area there. Again, door shut lines help you to do that. And you've done well here not to show the front wheel. It's just a sketch of mainly the rear. So great on doing that part there and, and making it the, the, the most obvious part of the design. Now, what's interesting here is that you've tried to render it in a way that gives it sort of the, uh, the glossy look. You've tried to show some of the shades through the reflections, some of the transparency of the glass, or at least the highly re high reflectivity of the glass a little bit. You've given it a bit of that uh, designer touch with some of this orange going on through here and there. But um, it's not necessary to go that far when you're doing this type of sketch, but good that you did do it. Also like the fact that you've hinted at the wheel design, you've given a minimal impression. You haven't spent a lot of time on the wheels. That's actually something that comes later on in the process. Maybe your stance is a little bit exaggerated, but that's okay because in this stage here, you're trying to overemphasize, which is a good thing. You're trying to overemphasize the idea, the design theme to give a, a bit more character to the car. You're always going to have to tone it back a little bit as you progress through the stages. But if this gets chosen, we know it comes back to reality at some point. But again, show your door cut lines always, at least in, 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 in views that have this much uh, detail to them, because that will always help to read the, uh, the character of the car. The only other thing I would say about here, and I'm not a fan of it, I, I see a lot of it, really doesn't do much for me, is drawing on black. I don't know who's ever started this trend, but for me, it's always been sort of a, a cheap way out to get um, a, a punchy drawing. You don't want to rely on that to give your sketches the punchy attitude that, that sometimes you're trying to communicate. It's a little bit harder to do it on white paper, but if you do it the hard way, everything after that is a walk in the park, a piece of cake. So I would always recommend drawing on white paper, which will emphasize uh, line quality. It's a lot easier, for example, when you're starting out to draw with a pen and you want to do that obviously on white paper. So this thing about reversing uh, your colors, reversing, maybe making a negative of your of your original sketch. I don't like it, <laughs> but each person has their own choice. So stay with it if you feel comfortable with it. You've done a great job of reflecting the uh, the 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 theme, the the impression, the the idea you've had into a quick sketch. That is what we call a worm's eye view, and it's quite dramatic. And you've done it very very effectively. So thanks and great job, Jackson. Moving on to the next submission. This one is from Dev Chapakar. Dev, you've done a great job here in terms of representing a vehicle, what it looks like when it's ultimately designed. You've saved the marketing, the photography cost because you've actually done a photorealistic design of this car. Now this is an existing car. I've picked this one out for a special reason, not because of the design, but because of the rendering uh, technique that uh, Dev has used here. And I want to go into a little bit of that because most of the critiques we've done up to now have been basically just criticizing the sketch technique or the rendering technique in terms of creating something. So what I want to do here with Dev's submission of a Lotus Amira R is explain a little bit of the pitfalls, a little bit of the booby traps that we have to be aware of when we're doing an actual rendering. And you would think that there are none because you're basically replicating an existing image or you're, you're taking a photograph and painting the photograph, which is what you see. But there are a lot of things on this rendering here that you have to be careful of to not make a mistake or not be aware of when you're actually doing the type of rendering. This can be often the case when you're doing the final rendering of your design and submitting it as perhaps the ultimate design look of the vehicle you want to present to your management. If we look at the car, not critiquing it from a design point of view, the Lotus and Mira R is a fantastic looking car. Congratulations to Russell Carr and team. But first of all, if you're going to uh, photorealistically render a Lotus, probably red is not the best choice for a car like this. We immediately associate red 
we were looking at a sports car with Ferrari. So I can imagine that many of you probably thought we were looking at a Ferrari when you first saw this image and uh, were maybe a bit surprised that it's a Lotus, but then you look at the detail and you can start to recognize that it is not a Ferrari. Some of the things that you have to be careful about, first of all, uh, when you're designing a car like this here, Dev, is that you're working on basically a car that is a landed on the page. You've got a small shadow underneath it, of course, that helps to settle the design on the paper. So I'm not criticizing it for that, just that the accuracy of the actual shadow underneath is not correct. You've not calculated the shadow. So one of the important things you want to do when you render a car is make sure that the shadow underneath the car, the projected shadow, is accurate uh, considering the orientation of the light, uh, considering the, the angle of the light, and making sure that that shadow is consistent with the perspective that you're using for the car. A couple other things, you have the car sitting quite low to the ground. And uh, when I say quite, I mean a heck of a lot because this car, if you look at where your shadow is coming around to the front here, you're, 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 you're killing ants with this thing. Man. This is like very, very low and you're not gonna be happy with the replacement cost of, of a piece like this if you ever hit a bump. So be careful that the actual shadow and the actual height of the bumper are consistent with reality. And you might wanna pull that shadow a little bit further down especially here, just to make sure that the front end doesn't look like it's dragging on the ground. A few of the things that are important are, for example, when you have a shut line running through here like this, I'm not sure how you've done it, but these shut lines here start to kill the reality when you're trying to do photorealistic renderings. You do need cut lines, but remember that cut lines always will have a lighter edge to it. So you would probably want to do these either in dark red uh, or a darker reddish gray or whatever, and then have one side of that gap, wherever that gap is, you need to have a light edge that's consistent again with the light source because it will always catch light. And you're missing that on all your cut lines here. So you're losing a sense of reality. If you go back into either the photograph that you took or the car that you were looking at in the same light condition, you'll see that that highlight on the edge of the cut line, on the edge that's actually receiving the light will always be lit up and it will be a lighter version of the basic color of the car. And when there's a strong beam of light hitting it, where the light source is hitting it, you will get what we call pigeon poop or something like that. It's basically a highlight that will actually look like if you did it here, you'd have that white-ish edge and then you'd have that little blip right there. And that is a basic concentration of the hot spot of the light source. So that happens quite often in areas where you get a quick transition of the curvature of the line. So be aware of that. Other things, for example, the reflection of your mirror would probably be down in here somewhere. Through here, you can see that this whole area of the windscreen here looks like you don't have any glass in the front windscreen. It just looks like a, a an opening. Now, if you look from here, this is your aid pillar. And you look on the other side, we have that line fading to almost zero, the A pillar, and then picking up here. Now that's pretty nice because you show sort of a, a, a live line. It's going from hard to soft, to invisible and back. But in reality, look at it truthfully, what you'll see is a bit of thickness to what we call the A pillar. That A pillar is perhaps probably 50 mil thick in this view here. And so on here, you know you're gonna see a bit more of it in terms of when it wraps around, not 50 mil thick, but more than what you're showing here. So that's gonna to have to be quite a bit darker to represent that thickness of the A pillar. So see, just by doing that, you're picking up that thickness as well as over here. You've got an interesting thing here. There are a lot of exercises we do when we're studying car design in university where we try to replicate the type of reflections that we get when we look at a car in detail. You take a snapshot of that fender in, uh, in a beautiful setting you'll see so many different things going on in the reflections and it's a lot of fun to capture that in your rendering. So what you have here is very blobby, uh, inconsistent reflections. There's a lot more going on than what you're actually showing here. Cut lines missing through here, uh, some inconsistencies with this area. Your glass is probably dropped, I would imagine, your side glass. So again, here uh, on your rocker, or your sill panel, a little bit of 
shaky hand syndrome, that's okay because maybe you're drinking coffee as you're working, but at the same time, you have to tighten it up at some point if you want it to be photorealistic. You'll hear it on and on again about wheels. If they're not in perspective, they'll make the car look like it's been in an accident and uh, everything's got twisted and bent and everything. So your wheel ellipses here are absolutely wrong in the front, but still wrong in the back. Your vanishing point, I was gonna move your pencils for you, um, is gonna be somewhere over here. And where you have your vanishing point of your minor axis, the minimal distance from side to side of your ellipse is going off to a completely different vanishing point. You can see it's going that way, whereas your other vanishing point for your other lines of your vehicle are going to that vanishing point. They are consistent. This one is way off. So that's off. And again, this one is off too, because if you look at the minor axis on that one, this is your major. That should, 90 degrees is your minor. If your vanishing points there are going to that vanishing point, sorry, if your lines are going to that vanishing point, you want this one to go to the same vanishing point, and it's not. It's going way over that way. So automatically, I would have to say, don't buy this car. It's been in an accident. Here on your intake vent, you want to push the contrast even more. Darks have to be dark, dark. Lights have to be light, light. And you've got just gray in here. So by putting a little bit of a darker gray or black almost, you would get the effect that that has some depth to it. At the moment, it just looks like a plastic cover with some light hitting it so again push the contrast here quite a bit more but again a few pointers like that and if you take those to the next level you'll have a car that actually looks a lot more photorealistic so good job thank you very much see you soon dev now let's move on to the next one the next one is a bit of a surprise because it's a almost a realistic looking car built for a company that doesn't make this kind of car, but who knows, potentially it could be coming in the future. This car is designed by 18 year old Maximus Kolf. <music> Max has delivered a car here that potentially, like I said, could be the future of McLaren in the SUV segment. It's an arena, I would say, where more and more cars are being produced than ever before. And one of the last holdouts in this segment is McLaren. People have been asking for it. We're not sure if it's gonna come or not, but if it does, could it look like Max's proposal here? Now, Max has done a great job it's uh, very unique in terms of looking uh, like a McLaren for this segment without looking too much like a McLaren. That's an interesting uh, juggle to get right because you have to invent a look that doesn't exist for the car company. I did something, I guess, similar to that with the X5, the original X5 for BMW, where you want to maintain the identity, the, the instant recognition of a brand with a new segment type of uh, vehicle. And Max has done, again, uh, without having to tell me that it's a McLaren, I can tell you right off the bat, a few ways to identify that, another few ways to say, okay, that's not a McLaren, but definitely from the front three quarter view, Max has gotten it quite accurate in terms of defining what a McLaren three-quarter front view could look like on a vehicle like this. What I'm looking at is almost a new interpretation of a variation or, or, or a different way of looking at what a McLaren front end looks like. It's got that sort of McLaren speed mark that McLaren has in its logo design and putting within that swoosh mark, which is very typical, for example, on the P1 and pushing the lights back in as we did on the 720S and the lower area of the front bumper area in dark like that is also a little bit McLaren-esque, a bit ominous because of the, the the aggressiveness of a design where you see sort of a very large uh, mouth almost uh, coming at you, open and aggressive, uh, but that is the character of this McLaren. But as we move from the back of the headlights backwards along the rear fender, you have this 
interesting uh, uh, feature line going in to the door and you could say that's McLaren-esque but from there it starts changing quite a bit in terms of a surfacing. Now that negative almost surface development of the door is quite McLaren. We have that again on the 720S there's a bit of that negative shape happening down lower uh, as you come down to the sill area the rocker area just be just above that area there and you have this uh, quite uh, major design feature just behind the front wheel which I would imagine is an air outlet from the front engine. I'm not sure that it really accomplishes the goal uh, 100% because it does look a bit different than you would see normally on the McLaren. I'm not a big fan of how you've done it here uh, Max because it wraps quite far down uh, below the feature line on the bottom side of the door and whenever you bring that into a strong feature line it tends to break up the flow so I think that that black graphic has been extended too far downwards if you would have finished it a little bit higher up before it came down to that lower light catcher area it might have come across a little bit uh, more professional perhaps and a little bit more aesthetically pleasing but apart from that slight detail the rest of this section along the side of the car works well but then I would say it continues back into the door a little bit at the rear too far you have it kicking up as it comes uh, up to the rear of the door shut line and then it has almost a peak and that peak there is a little bit forced a little bit uh, tormented as we call it there's a few issues there that perhaps could be resolved in the clay development phase or in 3D development phase as well as perhaps the shut line of the rear door the way it's coming down uh, makes the car seem a little bit static perhaps it's not a, a moving line it's just pretty much done with a straight edge diagonal but straight and there's not a lot of life in a in a straight line the black roof is comes across very nice it makes the car look quite light in terms of uh, overall visual volume uh, Mustang did that with the Mach-E uh, it works very well it's another nice trick to be able to eliminate some of that visual weight and you've done that well giving it real McLaren influence with that that whole top of the car being dark now as we move progressively to the rear again we're starting to see what a McLaren SUV could look like in the rear three-quarter view and here I think it falls apart uh, a little bit because that rear graphic here is just a lack of surface development it's a black uh, or a contrast color and there's not really a lot of definition surface definition or surface entertainment as we call it going on in the back it's a little bit again a little bit like a, a cheap way out or cop out uh, in terms of not having to resolve the surfacing too much it doesn't look like a lot of uh, pride was going uh, into the design process of the rear end here uh, first of all if you're going to do a rear taillight uh, do a rear taillight if you're not going to do it don't do it but to show two uh, segments here is your rear light you must have run out of time, Max, because I can imagine there are a lot of nicer solutions that could merit being on the back of a McLaren SUV than just a solid or a broken up uh, segment line. So that's not showing a lot of attention to detail. You can do a lot nicer and the design here could afford something like that, I'm sure. The wheel design, I wouldn't say spectacular or anything like that. It's just, uh, and, and perhaps not even McLaren-esque, it's just... Uh, a wheel design don't worry um, wheel designs are uh, not easy these days there are uh, infinite number of wheels that always look like we've replicated something already that's been done if you're going to design wheels to this level of design here then put perhaps more effort into coming up with a design that is completely unique and as we move back to the front I just want to point out one thing Max that uh, Works me a little bit, uh, uh, upsets me a little bit perhaps, is the extremeness of going with something uh, that perhaps you like and we all like, which is sort of the shark front end, the uh, type of design that perhaps you can remember from the earlier BMWs from the 80s, perhaps the 70s and 80s, when they had sort of the leaning forward profile of, of the grill, uh, of the face of the, of the car. And we also brought that in 
uh, with some of the McLarens when I was there. But to do it to this extreme here, Max, this is just, um, put it mildly, it's cartoonish or comical because it really uh, would not be done this way. So that exaggeration, that type of exaggeration, that amount of exaggeration kills the design, makes it look a little bit too unreal. And it, it kind of hurts because it just takes a small tweak to get it right. And what you've done here is push it too far over the edge. And now you would have to bring it back to reality simply by maintaining a certain amount of shark nose angle as you like here, but just reducing it by uh, a little bit, but not that much. Okay. Again, good job, Max, for doing uh, a proposal that could be considered a McLaren SUV. And I just want to leave you with one thought on this. Why not put that engine in the middle of the car between the front wheel and between the rear wheel, somewhere in the middle of the car, not what we would call a front engine or where the engine is just behind the front axle. Look at something a little bit more innovative, a little bit more exciting because the proportions you have here for McLaren are too run of the mill, too uh, uninnovative, I would say, to be a McLaren. McLaren innovates. McLaren's all about new technology, about making something that is leading edge. And what I see here is something that perhaps is McLaren-esque, but it would almost be an old fashioned type of McLaren, not a new look for McLaren. So push the limits a little bit more, make the designers worry at night about how they're gonna make your design real. Put that engine in the spot where you think you can adjust the proportions to make it look much more unique in its segment. Then you might have a real McLaren SUV. And if you do feel like taking up that challenge, Max, feel free to do that change and send it back to me and I guarantee you that I'll critique it again. You've created your first blender model and you've done an excellent job. I'd really like to see you push it even further, Max, and show me what a really unique looking McLaren SUV could be like. Thanks so much for sending it in. Thank you so much to everybody who's sent in their submissions. I know how difficult it is to receive a critique. I've been there and it is tough, but again, many, many thanks for putting yourself out there and hopefully I can be of some assistance to helping you reach that next plateau. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.